Hey guys, Jarek and Komodo here, and I'm going to be doing some Black Ops 1. It has been a while since I played Black Ops 1, and it's not because I hate Black Ops 2 or anything like that. That's not the reason I'm going back to Black Ops 1. But something about the guns in Black Ops 1 are just more fun to use than the guns in Black Ops 2. As a whole, I think I can say I like Black Ops 2 better, but... I don't know, using the AUG or using any of the SMGs in this game, just the guns were really fun. I just want to use them again. So I'm going to talk about my loadout really quick. Usually the loadout I go with, and this kind of fluctuates, but normally the... The one that stays the same over time is just Scavenger on my first perk, and then Sleight of Hand Pro on my second perk, which is a pretty well-rounded strategy to use, because you're not going to get all your highest kill streaks without running out of ammo without Scavenger. And Sleight of Hand Pro, that faster aim down sight time is so damn useful. It is the difference between staying alive or dying, if you manage to get caught up in a uh, straight-up gunfight instead of getting around someone. So it's really useful to have, but with SMGs, I can use a secondary loadout that I like using. So I like to put Warlord Pro on my second perk, and this allows me to put a suppressor and dual mags on my gun. Now dual mags gives me the twice the amount of ammo that I usually would have, so I don't need Sleight of Hand Pro, and this allowed me this allows me to use uh, Hardline on my first one. Now I like Hardline because I like getting all my highest kill streaks, and Hardline basically makes it so that you need one less kill to get your highest kill streaks. And that may not seem like a lot, but that is a really, really big difference when that one kill, you die one kill short of getting your attack dogs, that's just infuriating. I, I'm pretty sure you can relate to that. I'm pretty sure everyone can. I can't say that I can. I've never set attack dogs as my uh, kill streak because I've never been that ambitious. Yeah, it's, it's honestly not too hard to get attack dogs in Black Ops 1, although you don't really have the score streak option like you did in Black Ops 2. I mean, it's straight up kills with your gun in Black Ops 1. That's the only thing that's going to get you kill streaks. Um, but in Black Ops 2, to get the highest kill streaks, I mean, they were, that was like close to 20 kills. So, it's definitely easier in Black Ops 1 than Black Ops 2, at least for me. So yeah, let's go ahead and move right on to the questions. Um, if you guys want us to answer your question, put a question down below in the comments. We'll try to answer it in a future voiceover. And I'm going to try to start saying the names of people that leave the questions to kind of give you guys some... Uh, I was going to use the word praise. That's not really a not really the correct word to say. But hey, you know what I'm trying to say. You're, you're going to get your name out there if you actually tell me. And that was a body that fell. <laughs> I thought it was a person. That confused the hell out of me. So yeah, first question. And at the time I saved this, I did not save the person that asked it. So sorry for the person that asked this. What games are you best at? This... Uh, I'm gonna kind of put this into two different categories. The first one is games that I'm like naturally best at just... Because you know there's that difference. There's that game that you played for a long time and that's the reason you're good at it. Then there's that other game that you just... Of course playing it more you'll get better at it, but naturally you feel good at the game. I mean for me that was Fear Combat. I mean you played with me a few times and... <laughs> And I just yelled, or not yelled, yes, I yelled under my breath. I just said, oh god, under my breath. <laughs> because it's like, I instantly picked up that game and pretty much Scruff said the same thing. He said, I was the fear guru, basically. And it's it's one of those games where you just figure out things faster than other people and you know what to do in the right circumstance. And you just think faster than other people. And that game was that game. Same thing with Rainbow Six Vegas 2. I, mean, I think you played some Deathmatch, Deathmatch with me to know that's not something you want to do very often. <laughs> but like these games are the games that feel natural to me. I feel legitimately good at those games. Like I could take on anyone. Other games, uh, let's just go, into, go ahead and take another genre entirely that I don't really feel that I'm really naturally good at. Just fighting games. I am not naturally good at fighting games. I don't know what it is. It takes me longer to figure out what works and what doesn't work. My hands naturally cannot do the fast things that you need to do for fighting games. I'll admit, I'm uh, really good at fighting games, I think. I'm a little out of practice in some of the ones that I favored, but yeah, I uh, I played with people who played in tournaments and I had to get good fast. It's like, now if you may be saying, but you should be really good at Smash Brothers, yeah now, but it's still not like a natural thing to me. The reason I'm so good at the game is because I've played it a lot. But I'm not going to figure out things faster than other people. I don't know what it is, but it kind of takes a while for me to figure out like, alright, I can say, playing as Charizard, alright, I can grab someone, down throw them, and then use neutral, just my neutral attack to kind of hit them into the air. That takes a long time for me to figure out something that simple that you should just instantly start trying to work out in your mind by picking up the game. My problem is that game just is so fast. Hello, host migration. Someone rage quit. I don't, after this host migration, which I got selected to be the host, 
I don't know. For some reason, I just started playing bad. I just started trading kill after kill after going on a huge kill streak. So don't be expecting anything amazing after this. But yeah, no, also, in interrupting you really quick. This gun, in my opinion, is the most underrated gun in Black Ops 1. I mean, it's not necessarily like a the best thing in the world like a FAMAS or an AUG, but it can hold its own pretty much in any situation. The only thing that actually keeps it from being like one of the best guns in the game is that it has a little bit, a lot of recoil actually. But the thing with the recoil is that it's really, it's controllable because you know where it's going to go. It goes up and to the right every time. So it's really predictable. But yeah, the Galil, if you haven't really tried it that much, go ahead and give it another try. It's actually a good gun. Now, what were you saying? Everything in Smash Bros. happens so dang fast that I just... I feel like I have no control over it. And like <laughs> Instantly suicide. Man, I suicided so many times trying to get good with Marth because of that spike that leaves you in that animation for so long. But yeah, I just... I tried... Things happen so fast, like... The things that I'm trying to get down, like L cancelling, I can't do it. I mean, I can do it a little, but it's like... In the heat of a battle, it's hard for me to pull off. It's, um... Yeah, it's it's definitely a fast-paced game, and that's really why... That's some of the reason a lot of people really hated Brawl, is because the game is so slow. It's so very slow compared to Melee. It's like, they got rid of all the tech skill you needed, they basically made it so the hit stun wasn't a thing anymore, so you couldn't just juggle people and make them feel completely helpless and useless. Which, I mean, if you play with someone that's good in Melee, you know how that feels. You just feel like, well, this person's better than me, I'm not gonna win. I mean, it's, and you start, like, getting those mind games in, too, where you start shielding a lot, and you just feel vulnerable. Whereas in Brawl, that's not really a thing. But yeah, other side of the fence, game mode I'm not good at, most definitely real-time strategy. Good god. I, I don't know how this is a, th a thing. I loved StarCraft, I played it a lot when I was a kid, and, um, anything shot. else I tried to play after that... Enemy like, Warzone 2100, I love the game, wasn't so great at it. Uh, any strategy you can think of, I was never very good at, and I don't know what it was. I, I don't know. Like, I went and played StarCraft 2, and there's just a whole thing about it that's different from, like, StarCraft 1, where you got, like, the build order crap or whatever. I, I can't get into that. I don't like a game where it's like, you have to do this, this way, and only this way, or else you'll never be good at it. To an extent, I mean, there's obviously real-time strategies that don't play that way, where you don't need to get obsessed with the build order, otherwise you're going to lose. Um, yeah, I don't know, real-time strategies are that I'm good at them, but I just kind of don't really care to play them. I don't know, usually I'm quite good at games that are more mind games than they are physically, you need to react quickly, which is probably why I'm not so, I wasn't so naturally good at Super Smash Bros. Melee or Project M. Like I said, I'm into games like Rainbow Six Vegas or say, Red Orchestra 2, where it's a little bit slower paced and you get a lot of time to outthink what your opponents are going to do instead of just, I don't know, bum-rushing them, which obviously doesn't work in Red Orchestra 2 at all. Yeah, it doesn't work in a lot of games. Or it shouldn't work in a lot of games. But it does work in games, well, it kind of works in games like, say, what you're watching right now. You can pretty much run in and do very well, assuming you don't run into, like, five of them. But I think the only other thing... I mean, Fear Combat was like that fast-paced game that I think is the exception to this because there was a lot of mind games in that game. Like, you always, if you knew what to do in the correct situation, there was no way you were going to be beat. You you always, no matter what happened, the better player won. Slide kicking off of planters. <laughs> yeah, and that that's... I kind of figured that shit out really quickly, too, and a lot of that isn't like naturally you're going to do it instantly. Of course, you'll figure it out after playing it for a little bit of a while, but, you know, it only took me like four games of doing melee only to realize, hey, slide kicking from a higher location is a really viable thing to do, and the hitbox on it, it's like continuous. I couldn't figure out slide kicking until I actually played through fear, because I didn't know that you had to melee first, then crouch. Best last kill, by the way. Fail grenade against the wall and shot him anyway. Whatever. <laughs> Didn't need that grenade, I guess. You can see what I was doing, too, because it's like... I was trying to sidestep fast enough to throw the grenade but not expose myself. Didn't work. Just fuck that wall. <laughs> see, that was a pretty decent game using the MPL. This is also another really underrated gun, the MPL. I actually really like the submachine gun. And it's also one of the few SMGs where I can use dual mags. I really wish more SMGs... Like, you just can't use it on the other SMGs. 
So yeah, there's been some Black Ops 1 gameplay. Hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I'll see you later.